Hello Providence College hockey fans, welcome to This Week in Friars Hockey presented by Dunkin' Donuts. I'm Nick Rojas. It was a frustrating 2-0 loss to the Boston University Terriers this past weekend. We caught up with head coach Nate Lehman to talk about that game, plus he previews this weekend's matchup with the UMass Minutemen. We also had the chance to catch up with Castro Bjorquist to talk about the great start to his season. Let's start the show. We're joined now by the head coach of the men's ice hockey team, Coach Lehman. Coach, tough result, after, especially after the tough first two periods there over in BU. What did you see out of the team this weekend? Uh, you know, um, we're continuing to grow. I mean, I, I thought we played pretty well for two periods, and then uh, the third period we just uh, we turned too many pucks over in the neutral zone. So that came back to kind of get us a little bit. But um, I, we hit two posts in the game early, and I think one of those goes in. It's probably a different game. but. Um, overall, you know, it's uh, it was a tough game in a tough building, and hopefully, we grow from it. Looking to get back in the wind column this weekend. UMass making some improvements during the off season. What's going to be the focal point in practice this week? Uh, you, you know, just playing our game. You know, getting back to we. Uh, you know, this is twice we've been shut out in in four games here. So a lot of goal scoring, a lot of what we need to do to score goals, how we need to attack the net, um, and having good poise around the net. Now, some people might not know this, but during this preseason and during the beginning parts of the season, you've been monitoring some of the players with some heart monitors to kind of see what their energy levels are during different points of the day. How has that affected how you coach and how you guys prepare the team each week? Well, yeah, the guys, as soon as they come down to the rink, they put it on every day, whether it's a lift or whether it's a, a skate. So, and they've been wearing them for the game. So we've been able to monitor kind of uh, their workloads, basically. And uh, the, the data's been really good. I mean, we've adjusted some things in practice. Um, and we've adjusted some of our breathing techniques during the games um, because we're, what we were finding is that guys weren't recovering the right way. So we spent some time on that. Uh, I think it's helped a little bit and we'll continue to use all the information to help the guys, you know, kind of have the best recovery they can. Well, it's great to hear that science helping, helping out your team there. Good luck this weekend and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Thanks Dick. I wanted to thank all of you for your support and prayers for Drew Brown. Over the past month, Drew has basically been living either in a hospital or at home with only his parents' care. He had a, he had a tumor removed from his brain. Um, that was a long process. And uh, he's continuing to battle some more tumors in his body. Anything you can do to support the family, I know goes to the right purposes of helping Drew battle cancer and win this fight. Thank you very much. Thank you for thinking of Drew, and thank you for being a friar. Joined now by sophomore forward Casper Bjorquist. Casper, off to such a great start in the beginning parts of the season. What were some of the differences between your freshman and sophomore years in terms of preparation for a new season? Uh, well, I think for a team, uh, we had a lot of guys coming back. Uh, we knew we knew a lot of the guys, and, and the freshmen were, were, were to a great start in the first games. And uh, individually, I think uh, I had a great summer uh, working back home uh, with my swing coach. And uh, I also think uh, that the f the the first month worked really well. We didn't have a lot of injuries. And uh, of course, the first game we got some injuries, but before that, the preseason worked really well. We didn't get any any injuries injuries there, so. And that leads to a good start in the month of, month of October. Now, going into the season, before in, earlier in the summer, you had Pittsburgh Penguins development camp. What was that experience like for you? Uh, it was an amazing experience. Uh, just being able to be uh, in Pittsburgh uh, at the facility, see all the the people, and uh, what a great organization it is, and also. Uh, it was it was great to to play college hockey and then go in there because uh, I I got two Finnish friends who were there and obviously we all got along pretty well with all the other guys but for me it was an advantage that I, I played college hockey and I I, I in that way I, I knew a lot of the players who, who who were at the camp and it showed what a great league uh, college hockey is because uh, it, I don't I can't say the numbers but the majority of the guys play college hockey and you. Uh, it's no matter where you go, uh, the first tournament, the first camp you have with uh, with your team, uh, the first thing you start talking about is always about, oh, you play at that rink, oh, you play at that place, you play at that place, and that always happened in Finland, and I was always able to do that. When I got here, everybody was talking about USHL, 
and I couldn't do that my first year here. But now when I went into to Pittsburgh, I was able. Oh yeah, we played there. We played there. So uh, it's just uh, I, f I felt really good being there. Well, it's great to see the college game kind of making its way over there to Pittsburgh, and they're a great organization. Speaking of uh, great organizations, your team here had some success in the first month. Launched the team into a national conversation there, getting some high rankings. How do you get the team to focus? Not so much on the outside attention you're getting, but focus on the guys in the locker room and just on hockey. Uh, I think uh, it's just uh, about everyday stuff. Uh, you have to, to wake up and try to establish something new every day. Uh, make sure that you get better every day. Uh, it's not something you, obviously the stuff that, that comes online, uh, yeah, people talk about it, people on campus tell, tell you that you're doing a great job, stuff like that, but I still think uh, our game, uh, needs to improve we haven't had our best games yet hopefully uh, and I think we've uh, we've uh, got some big wins uh, but we still we still haven't got that a game game yet so uh, still waiting to get that and also uh, I think we've uh, we've uh, had some hard games and, and games that we've learned from uh, and hopefully we'll uh, keep learning from mistakes and then uh, keep getting better now, Casper, it can't always be about hockey for you. You have interests outside there. We were talking before. What's some of your interests besides hockey? Uh, well, uh, my, my grandpa, who uh, actually passed away earlier this year, uh, he was a Hall of Famer back home in, uh, in horse racing and in chariot racing that we have back home. So uh, that's uh, obviously uh, with my blood, it's, uh, it's, it's part of me. And, uh, and my roommates, uh, they don't really like me when like it when I finish horse racing. Uh, <laughs> blasts on uh, full volume on on, uh, on Friday or Thursday night. Uh, so, but um, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's one thing that I like to watch. Well, horse racing is an incredible sport. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, and good luck the rest of the year. Now it's time to send it down to KJ Hammond with this week's preview. KJ. For this home and home weekend, the Friars welcome in the youngest team in Division I hockey. The UMass Minutemen currently have 13 freshmen on their roster, including Oliver Chow, who's currently tied 7th in the Hockey East with points. But this team also has some experience as well, a familiar name for you Friar fans, Nico Rufo. That's right, he transferred to UMass after his senior year here at Providence College, and he's been doing pretty well on that first line. Currently, he's already amassed all of his points from his senior season in just three games for UMass. I'm sure it'll be a nice homecoming for him back here at Schneider Arena, but once he's on that ice, it'll be all business. That's it for your scouting report. Back to you, Nick. Thank you so much, KJ, and of course, thank you to our guests, Coach Lehman and Casper Bjorkwist for joining us on today's show. Thursday night's game starts at 7 p.m. and watch that online at umassathletics.com or listen to it on the radio at 12.40 a.m. Tickets are still available for Saturday night's game. Puck drop is at 7 p.m. If you can't make it out to the rink, watch it on TV on Cox Yearview or watch it at Friars.com. Of course, for all the post pictures, updates, and more, follow the team on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Thank you so much for watching This Week in Friars Hockey presented by Dunkin' Donuts. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.